why chemistry? That's a really interesting question, and, and no one has asked me why chemistry before. People have asked me why science, um, and I, I don't know. I do remember um, I was given a microscope as a kid. I was about my eighth birthday, and uh, it wasn't working, so it was taken back, and they didn't have any others, so I got a chemistry set instead. And I dyed the house many colours. Um, copper compounds are glorious, and I messed around with everything. Any experiment I could get my hand on, and stuff in the kitchen and mixing things, and I was just kind of obsessed with making messes and making colours and exploring and just scientifically obsessed, really. Well, there is, a, there is a thrill to scientific discovery. There's a, there, there is a kind of kick that when you investigate something, you are the first person in the world to know that. The only person. And you, you're in this field and it's yours. You feel very connected to your topic, very passionate about it. And you're learning about it and, and, and then telling people about it as well. It is, it's around the community um, and the, the idea of discovery. Um, yeah, it's, it's extraordinary. I, I love science communication, and it's because I, I love communicating and I love science. And I, I get a little carried away. I do. When I, when I start talking about science, I do get carried away because there's so many exciting things and I just want to tell people. I just kind of want to stop people in the street and say, did you know this? Because it's extraordinary. And seeing them kind of very often go from quite sceptical and not very interested to thinking, well, that is quite amazing. And then they want to know a little bit more and a little bit more. And it's just kind of sparking off this, this kind of idea in their head and that, that you know, anything is possible and things that are around you without even realising you, that, that you, as you walk around your day-to-day -day life, the extraordinary amount of chemistry, of physics, biology, and everything that we do that we overlook and just grasping onto some of that is extraordinary. I think I touch upon different levels of communication within a show. Um, but you do have to have a kind of target in your head. So very often I'll be doing family events and you have to realise, well, maybe what have they seen in school? What will they understand? Uh, and partly the most important thing is actually the language that you'll use. If I'm doing an adult event, it can have almost the same content as a family event, but maybe the explanation will be slightly different in terms of language because adults don't necessarily know more than the 10 year olds coming in from school so they need to they, they want to find out the same amount of information and it's just really about how you pitch it as a presenter rather than the the content actually changing too much yes i i do a phd i do science communicating and i teach salsa and sometimes those worlds combine. They do. I have done the Science of Salsa event. Um, I, I've been known to bring up thermodynamics in salsa classes. The, my, my students are getting used to it. Um, the odd little scientific reference. I can't help it. Um, science. You can explain anything through the, the medium of science. And science and dance, yeah, they can go together. That, that's going to be a yes, um, and I brought up probably my favourite scientist in, in my show. I am mildly obsessed with Marie Curie and her entire family, um, because they're extraordinary. And the more I find out about the whole Curie family, the more amazed I am. And it's not just that they were doing extraordinary science in very unusual circumstances, you know, this kind of purpose-built hut, exposing themselves to dangers that they didn't even realise, but in this just kind of thirst for knowledge. I, I think the Curies really had this drive in them to explore. And then coupling that with the age in which they were doing them, they were surrounded by great scientific minds, and Marie Curie in particular, and the fascinating life that she had, to fight her way through this male-dominated world, the prejudice, the idiots that turned her away from universities, that, because women couldn't be politically interested and educated, it's insane. You know, she was extraordinarily successful. And, you know, her later life, you know, the, the Nobel Prize Committee had issues with her personal life. Extraordinary. And she battled all this and she kind of fought on. Um, 
she developed the, the petite curies, the mobile x-ray units. Extraordinary woman, extraordinary life, and definitely a great inspiration for anyone thinking about chemistry. Chemistry is for everyone, and maybe not a degree in chemistry is for everyone, but the interest is there. The, the extraordinary world around us, there's so much chemistry going on. I just I implore people just to have a little look around. As simple as take a glass of water, see if you just learn some of the extraordinary chemistry going on in a glass of water. You could, you could talk for hours on it and just tap into that wonder. Take anything around you at all and just explore it. I was encouraging kids today, um, I'd given them all the elements and some of them were asking questions about it and I told them some about it and I said, but what to do is go home and look up that element, make that element your own, find out a fact about it and just to explore, continue to explore.